Okay. Welcome back. To Abomination Vaults, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This has gone on quite a bit longer than I thought it would, to be honest. Um, I thought it would kind of, I don't know, lose its appeal of just, like, solo RPGs. But the combat and everything and, and the character building is just so good. It just, it just works. So, um... Yeah, we killed a bunch of ghouls and stuff last time. That was that was fun. Killed a ghost. Um, and in the interim, I decided to redo Hagrin Wolf Wolf Snout. So we've got instead Snonk Broadma, <laughs> and I especially love the name Snonk. I think it's fantastic. Snonk Broadmaw. He's a fighter. He's a rat folk. He is a rat folk fighter. And he's an animal wrangler. Uh, specifically with the uh, multi-class dedication of animal trainer. Uh, so he has a cat with him. Because of course, if a rat is going to tame and wrangle a dangerous animal... It's definitely going to be a cat. Now, my intention is to ride the cat, of course. I mean, that's like final form snonk. But um, cats come in uh, at small, and he is small, so he can't ride it yet. It will eventually get medium, I think at level six for him. Uh, and then we'll be able to ride Brandu. I kept the name Brandu, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't have, it doesn't fit as well. Maybe we have to rename this. Um, what's a good name for a cat? I don't know why this popped into my head, but we'll go with it. Basilicus is his cat's name. We have to make sure we change the token there. There you go. Basilicus is his cat. Uh, so for right now, he's just a small cat. Um, and he can be commanded, of course, by Snonk as an action. And he's not horrific. He's got plus eight on his attacks. Claw or jaws. Um... And, you know, Jaws does 1d6 plus 2. Claws do less, but are agile if he ever is going to make two strikes. But more likely, he's going to use his support benefit. Um, until the start of my next turn, whenever Snonk hits uh, the creature. After the support benefit, uh, it becomes off guard until the end of Snonk's next turn. That's pretty nice. If we can't get into a flank or something like that, pretty sweet. <laughs> um, so, of course, Basilicus is not too powerful defensively. He's only got 25 HP, 18 AC, so we'd like to avoid him getting into uh, dangerous situations. As for Snonk, you know, standard fighter for the most part. Uh, I kept the two-handed idea because we do have the Retribution Axe. Um, so, it's a good axe, and I want to keep using it. So, um, we're not going to be utilizing Shield Block, but obviously our reactive strikes are going to be nice and juicy. And for a feat, we've got Vicious Swing. So this costs two actions. Counts as two attacks when calculating a multiple attack penalty. Uh, but you roll once, and if it hits, it deals an extra die of weapon damage. So that means when we Vicious Swing, our axe does 3d12 plus 4 damage. Delicious. Delicious stuff. Okay. That's basically it. He's not super complicated. He's a fighter. But he's certainly an interesting one. <laughs> uh... 
So, yeah. Okay, we're going to be moving on. I did do a little bit of shopping. Not a whole lot. I sold a bunch of stuff, of course. And then I bought a few more scrolls of heal, just in case we need some extra healing on the spot. Uh, and a couple scrolls of dispel magic. People recommended this. Uh, it's a counteract check against any sort of uh, spell effect or unattended magic item. So I figure we might be able to find uses for that. Okay. Let's continue. Whoops. That door should not have been open. Okay. A large mound of dark gray soil lies heaped in the southern half of this room. And there's a couple of violet fungi. The fungi aren't yet fully grown, but are still dangerous to non-ghouls. Prove it. Damn it, I always forget scouting. And you should be defending. Uh, okay, low threat. Not a whole lot to say about this. Should be pretty easy. Their initiatives were shit. Arzi will just start swinging, as is his wand. Although he could trip. Let's do a trip. Boom. Knocked that fungus prone. Took two damage on a crit success. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you, fungi. And now we do a follow-up. We hit. Boom. 13 damage. Boom. And then, uh, should I do one more? Fuck it. Boom. Hit again. Oh my god. Garzil. Beast mode. Seven damage. Done. Wibble fizzle crank. He's gonna go for this snipe over here. And it's gonna zoom in. I know it. Yep. Did that. Eight. I think that's good enough against these weak little bitches. Fire. Boom. 12 damage. Done. Snonk Broadmaw. Here we go. He's gonna move right here. He's gonna target this thing. Um, uh, He could do Vicious Swing, but we'll just do one swing. Look at that. Plus 12. Thanks to being a fighter. He's an expert. It's excellent stuff. Of course it hit. How could it not? He hit on a fucking two! He hit on a fucking two! For 21 damage. Holy shit, how much health do these things have? 45. Okay, so they do have a lot of health. Alright, he'll swing a second time, of course. And of course he'll hit. How could he not? For another 19 damage. Killing it. Good. Uh, the cat gets left behind, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, Botha, let's go ahead and do an electric arc. We don't need to overthink this one. That looks like double damage to me, 16. Okay, and the violet fungus is gonna go... What has it got? Tentacles plus violet rot. Yeesh. Okay. It hit. But liberating step. Ooh, that's not covering his ass. We'll use it though, because it helps. Seven damage. Um and then he has to roll his fortitude. No problem. Okay, second attack. Miss. And the third attack. Critical miss. That's that. It's not long for this world. 
Move. Swing. Miss. Let's trip. It's minus five. No, no trip. Damn. Wibble fizzle crank. A three. Ooh, that's not gonna cut it. No, that's not gonna cut it. Alright, um he's gonna order Basilicus to come in. One, two, yep, that's fine. And Basilicus will just uh seems a waste to have him attack and in in you know impact Snonk's attack penalties, so he'll just use his benefit. And then we'll use Vicious Swing. And Target was the last creature to damage me. There you go. 3d12 plus 6. Fucking 3d12. Boom! Done! <laughs> Glorious. Okay, that was the encounter. Simple. Alright, and I'm trying to make it a habit to actually delete these things now, because I think they clutter up the game with all their swirling effects. Okay, uh, that brings us up to 540 out of 1,000. Boom. Elevator up. The doors to this room open onto solid stone of the magic elevator beyond is still up at area B34. Yeah, so I don't think that's anything for us. Then we have a very long, ominous hallway. Just move up here. Okay. Uh, you don't actually have a light spell on you. We need that. Yeah. Boom! While this room might have once served as a writing studio, today its condition has been all but obliterated by dozens of tiny swatches of skinned flesh marked with tattoos. Judging by the workspace on the table in the middle of the room, these tattoos have been placed post-mortem, with a swath of pale skin stretched over the desk, sporting a half-completed image of a sinister woman. Aller Rosk served as a notary and scribe for Belcor when he lived, but after he died and became a ghoul, his nature and interests shifted, if only slightly. He's developed a unique taste for tattooed flesh. The idea of writing something down and then eating it appeals to the twisted ghoul, and when he isn't preparing a less-than-fresh Morlock for distribution to the other ghouls, he's here, preparing his latest work on a swath of Morlock skin. His current project is a depiction of Belcora. While he doesn't intend to eat this one, some part of him knows that this work of art, once complete, won't have a fate any different than the numerous others he's created over the years. Aller's focus on his work and takes a minus two penalty check, or minus two penalty to initiative checks. If interrupted, he seethes and curses, wasting an action each round for the first two rounds, voicing his displeasure and informing the heroes about the blasphemous limericks and humiliating odes he'll be tattooing onto their corpses once he's defeated them. Single-minded to a fault, Alarosk pursues foes relentlessly once a fight begins and fights until he is destroyed. Of course he does. Alright, so let's get uh, scouting going, and we'll get that going. And we need to make him visible. Add them all to the encounter. Um, and uh, roll for all them bones. Okay, and minus two for him. He gets plus 15 normally, though. So he still went first. Or at least he's missing an action. Okay, so he is not uh, a lightweight. He's got all the usual goodies. Um, and he's just better at them. He has no spells or anything. So he's just a savage kind of ghoul. He 
can consume tattooed flesh, though. He has one piece of uh, tattooed flesh on his person. So he regains 46 hit points and uh, gets quickened one. Can use this extra action to make a jaw strike. Duration one round. Okay. Let's get some better music here. Uh, um, I don't know. Good generic combat music. Alright, well, he's gonna go first. He's gonna spend one action yelling about how he's gonna tattoo fuck all over our bodies. Uh, and then he's going to move. I guess he'd probably block the door, but... I don't know. By rules, I don't think that does block the door. Because I can move diagonally, but I think... Realistically, we'd have to say that... Uh, blocks the door. So he'll move there, and then he'll swing out with his... Teeth. Missing. Him missing on a six. That feels pretty good. Okay, then he'll try and claw us and not miss. But we do have... Oh, no. Well, we will block. So we got four damage through. And we have to do old DC 22 Fortitude or become paralyzed. Failed. We are paralyzed. Um... That's his turn. Problematic. Actually, extremely problematic. If Garziel doesn't become unparalyzed, this fight is uh, brutal. We all have to tumble through. So, he'd get another save at the end of his turn. Hmm. Yeah, no point waiting, I guess. Alright, Snonk is going to try to tumble through. Not going to go well. Let's see, what's our... Uh... It's a good tumble through and a uh, picture. Stone. There you go. Okay, so Snonk is uh, technically going to move on to Garziel. And then he's going to tumble through. Well, yeah. He's tumbling through as his action. He failed. Yeesh. His second action will be to tumble through. Got a 25% chance of success. Good enough for me. Uh, so hold on. He'll go right onto there. Fuck yeah. And then his third action will be to swing. Missing. Fuck. Wibble Fizzle Crank is going to devise a stratagem. I will take that. Unfortunately, not going to be a crit based on what we know. I mean, a player might not know that, but... Actually, a player would be able to deduce... Snock roll a 21. That was a miss. So you know that it's at least a 22. Um, so you would deduce it's not a crit. Not that it matters really much. Uh, we wouldn't do anything differently. If it was or wasn't. Well, apparently he had that other stratagem effect that I didn't remove. And damage. 
All right, Garziel cannot do anything except roll to try and uh, get out of it. So he's just going to roll a fortitude saving throw. And the DC is one lower than it was before, so it's a 21. He rolled a 2, so he is still paralyzed. And Botha can't do much. But she is going to summon an animal. We're going to bring out the man, the myth, the legend, Scave Corpion. Who immediately gets two actions. Let's go for the, um, pincer. Miss. Of course, you rolled a four. And another pincer. Miss. Damn. All right. Alarosk. Will he, uh, will he focus on Garzil who's paralyzed? Probably, to be honest. I know he's got Snonk behind him, but... Uh, this guy's off guard. He might move, though, to avoid this, uh, this flanking. But first, let's start with, uh, his... No, his jaw. Yeah, it was very likely to hit. So, 18 damage to Garziel. Who has to now roll against Ghoul Fever again. He's already beaten it once. Okay, he beat it a second time. Then he's going to do a second action as a claw. And hit. For 10 damage. And then, yeah, he'll, he'll move over into the corner to avoid that nonsense. He tried to block it off, but Snonk... Snonk got through... Okay, uh, Snonk is going to, um, he's going to move Basilicus up. Basilicus will use his, uh, support ability. And then Snonk will use Vicious Swing. Missing. Fuck. You do place a lot of hopes and dreams on that vicious swing. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Alright. Wibble, uh, unfortunately, is going to have to move in. Wait a minute, Mikey. He fucking moved. Oh, yeah. Demon said he may use reactive strike. Of course. Let's throw that on there. Oh, okay. It was a miss. Uh, okay. So Wibble is going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then let's just use Accidental Shot. Roll 1d20. Roll 1d20. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so an 18. Um, yeah, we don't have to roll anything. We just did. So, it's 18 plus 7, 25. It's a hit, so we can just roll damage. 2d8. You know, the always the hope with that is that we get a crit, but it never happened. Okay, Garziel's still paralyzed. Can't do anything except roll Fortitude. Uh, it's now DC 20. Still failing. Batha will, of course, direct Scave Corpion to move in. And, uh, give it the old pincer. Crit! From Scave Corpion! 20 damage! Boom! Be feeling that tomorrow. Alright, Alarosk. Will he continue to focus on Garziel, who is honestly the least of his concerns at this point? I think he'll switch to Snonk. Um, he can Swift Leap, 
by the way. That could be useful to him. Jump up to half his speed, not triggering reactions. That's probably what he should have done last time. Yeah, I guess he'll do that. Even though he's not... Um... He's not... Uh... What am I, what's the he's not flank is the word I'm looking for but it does force the animals to you know they have to be activated uh, to move and then they only get one attack and blah 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 so it's probably worth it or you could just consume tattooed flesh and just go ham on snonk as one does. Alright, he'll consume the flesh. So he heals 4d6. Pretty big. No, not Snonk Broadmaw. Okay. And he becomes Quicken. Um, but not this turn. He's Quicken next turn. So now his second action will be to jaw Snonk and miss. And his third action will be to claw Snonk and hit. I don't think that Garziel can use any reactions. I'm sort of... I'm, yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't think so. So 15 damage to Snonk. Ouch. And he's going to have to make the DC 22 Fortitude check. Success. Good. Avoiding paralysis. Okay, now Snonk's going. I think we're just going to put it all in a vicious swing. Everything we've got. There you go. Boom. Big mamma jamma hit. Oh yeah, 29. Boom! Okay, and then he's gonna have to do a third strike at plus two, which is pretty weak. There's other better things we could do, probably. We could try and demoralize him. Uh, except, I don't think he's very good at it. No, I didn't put anything into that. He's, he's not a, he's not intimidating. So, uh, the other option is just to move, I suppose, and get away from him. Alright, he'll move. If nothing else, he has to use an action to move in. Uh, he wants to keep going at Snog. Alright, let's devise a stratagem. Seven is not going to be anything for us. We already used accidental shot. Um, so I could grab a wand, or I could do a versatile vial. Good versatile vial for the smoke bomb. That would help Garziel. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So we're going to spend a versatile vial. I guess I could have just click use. And then that gives us the smoke ball. And we're going to use that. there. Uh, they become concealed. Now, yes, that does mean that all other creatures are concealed to them. Because they're just in a cloud of smoke. But it really mostly helps Garziel not die. 
So Garziel will roll. This is now a uh, DC 19 roll. He's got a 50% chance of making this. He finally does. He's no longer paralyzed. But that's the end of his turn. Uh, Batha is going to command Scave Corpion. Hey, a hit! Seven damage. And then he's going to follow it up with a grapple. No, oh, Fortitude 24. Fuck. It's tough, man. It's tough to grapple these high-end enemies. All right, well, he tried. And then Botha's other action. Um, don't know if I'm worried about Garziel. He may not go for him due to the smoke. And I'm not worried about the cave scorpion. So I'm mostly worried about Snog. Let's cast heal on him. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, I guess he'll jump over here. He's got a free quickened action. But he still has to abide by the multiple attack penalty. Uh, but he'll start with j jaw. Critting. That's not good. 44 damage. He is down. Even if we use Liberating Step, I don't think that would save it. Uh, so it's irrelevant. And he's straight to dying too because he got crit. And um, he is going to have to roll uh, both of the things. He might be paralyzed as well. But let's roll for Ghoul Fever. Critical fail, so he goes straight to stage two, which is bad because he takes 2d6. Damage here is irrelevant. The point is he goes to dying three. And then he has to roll for paralyzation. Paralyzation, as they say. Um, and he failed that, so he's also paralyzed. That was the worst turn of Snog's life. Now, some DMs will just say, well, it would make sense for them to just kill you right away. Uh, and they'll just kill you. I, my, yeah, we, uh, no. I mean, I would never do it. I never had a DM that did stuff like that. It's just unfair. You know, it's, it's... I mean, individual characters can and do die. You know, we had Buzzard die. That, that can happen, you know. You just... You just can't quite save him, or like an extremely unfortunate crit or something. But for an enemy to just go out of their way to just beat the shit out of you specifically, it's just a bad, bad feeling. <laughs> um, so, you know. But to each their own. But he'll uh, go after the skate, well, he'll go after Scave. So he'll do another claw, missing, and then he'll do another claw, hitting. And yeah, we'll use Liberating Step to save Scave Corpion. Who is going to have to roll the DC Fortitude check? Aha, you can't paralyze him. You can't stop him. Uh, okay, so Snonk doesn't have toughness or die hard or anything like that. Oh, no, he does have toughness, but he doesn't have die hard. So if he fails his recovery check, he is dead. And that was an extremely short-lived character. Yep, he dead. What? What? 
What? You know how long I spent on Snonk Broadmaw? For him to die in the second battle? What the fuck? That, what an extremely unfortunate string of events. One, he has to get crit. And take, you know, enough damage to drop him. Then he goes to dying too. Then he had to fail he had to critically fail specifically critically fail the ghoul fever saving throw so he took damage from that right away and then he had to fail this save to get to dine four and specifically be in an initiative order that prevented anyone from helping him, and he just dies. Hold on, does he... Can he go to, like, the bottom of the initiative order or something? Moving initiative when getting dying condition. Oh, hold on. Oh, this this is specifically a rule to fix what I just said. Okay, hold on. Let me actually crack open the the rule book here so I can get the specific ruling so when you reach zero hit points move your initiative position to directly before the turn in which you were reduced to zero hp so he goes now directly before aller and that's specifically to ensure that an entire round goes by before Snog. In order to ensure what that what just happened doesn't happen. Because now that gives everybody a chance to save his life. Which is what we want to do, because he's our little Snog. Alright. Perfect. Glad. Excellent. Except he's not dead. Don't, don't you mark him as dead. He's not out of it. I don't know, it gave him the skull. Oh, that, okay, yeah, don't do that. He's, uh... He's just in dire straits, all right? He's not dead. Okay, anyways. Wibble. Let's devise a stratagem. That's not gonna be enough. There's nothing I can do about that. You can actually sh hold on. I'm just okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um. So what he's gonna do? He's just gonna move here on top of Snog with his second action, and then his third action. Um. I don't think there is much. I could try to demoralize, but my intimidation sucks. So I don't think there's a whole lot. 
Uh, I could have aided Garziel before I moved. So I guess I'll aid him before I move. And, yeah, aiding is always just a big question mark. Um, attempt a skill roll or attack roll of a type decided by the GM. Typical DC is 15. It's just all so vague, you know. Just don't get it. I mean, I guess it's like, how am I how am I gonna help Garziel take down Aller Rosk here? And obviously, you want to use some sort of big skill, but I don't know. Some sort of occultism check. Because he's undead. No, but it's always religion. I don't know. Just use my devise a stratagem thing as like an attack roll. And point out a spot for him. In which case, the DC is 15. And I got an 18. I don't know, man. The 8 thing, it's just so vague. And I still... I don't understand, like how lenient they expect it to be. You know? Like, does it matter? Or is it more just about, like, using an action in combat and just rolling? Because from what I understand, like, at higher levels, you're just kind of expected to, like, crit on it all the time and get big bonuses to each other. And that's just kind of, like, built into the system. I could faint instead, but I don't think that really. Perception against perception. Uh... But it's only faint is only good for me, so. I just And it seems like I'm not the only like new player to Pathfinder that really just doesn't get aid that well. even mentions an attack roll. That's what I don't... God, there's like a billion discussions about aid. I hate it. I don't I don't even want to do it. I don't even want to do it It's just I, I just don't get it
You can't just be like, I aid with diplomacy. You probably have to come up with a good, strong way to justify allowing it. And then there's a lot of discussion. Okay, but it says you should be next to the person you're aiding or the target. So I guess Wibble could move up here first. And then... Aid. But the DC is 20, isn't it? I said it was 15, but it's 20. No, here it says typical DC is 15, so they must have changed that. Because most people here are discussing a DC of 20. So I guess they probably nerfed it so it was more accessible early game. Yeah, okay. In my remastered book, it says 15. Um... Yeah, okay, so whatever. I'm using Devise a Stratagem to, to help out, and that's my reaction. So we don't need to discuss this anymore. Okay, Garziel is then going to go. He's going to move 5, 10, 15. Uh, he gets plus 1 to this roll. We're no longer concealed. Let me get rid of that. So, plus one circumstance bonus, plus 11, miss. Awesome. I'm glad we went through all that, by the way. Uh, his second action, he's he's got to go for. We got to bring him down. Fuck. Miserable. Okay, Botha, you have to get up there. Technically, that would be in the concealment, so. Snonk. Use heal. Boom. He's... he's up. Okay, so Snonk is prone. But he's alive. So, he, uh, could just swing from down here. Because if he stands, he'd have to immediately move because he'd be in the same space. But it definitely said that you can share a space. You can share a space with a prone creature if that creature is willing, unconscious, or dead, and if it is your size or smaller. So, yeah, they can share a space. <laughs> so, um... He's going to, uh... Should he vicious swing from down there? Fuck it. Boom. Hit. This is gonna do it. Oh, ho, 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 yeah! Snog came back with a vengeance! Fuck yeah, Snog. Jesus. That was... That was dicey. But thanks to the proper interpretation of the rules, we're all okay. Yeesh. Uh, he eventually will become unparalyzed. So, that's that. Botha is going to immediately treat his wounds, and we can cool it on that music. Okay, 13 health. He's no longer wounded. Botha, Cave Scorpion, goes away. You can also treat Garziel. Yeah, so you can set the higher DC, but then you're less likely to crit. You know? So, I don't think it's worth bumping up the DC when we can... when we're, like, at good crit range. 
are getting into good crit rain. Um. Okay. Smog is still feeling the burn. This room contains two bulk of books about tattoo artistry and historical tattoos of interest to Moreland. Oh, well, we will definitely take those. Two of them. Uh oh, cumbered. That's when we hand it off to Snog. He's a pack rat. So he does not get encumbered. And Ross didn't have anything on. Yeah. Okay. We've got a locked door here that has no information about how to unlock it. You gotta love that stuff. What are we guessing here? Like a DC 20 thievery check three times or something? That's usually what it is. <laughs> How are you not going to have that information here? Hmm. Okay, well, let's just roll some thievery checks. I'm terrible at thievery. Well, that's one. There's definitely... Yeah, here. Three successful DC-20 thievery checks. I guess that's like you getting each of the pins in a row or something like that. It doesn't say in a row, though. But if it's not in a row, then what's the point? Like, we can just sit here and I'll spend, you know, ten minutes and I'll get it unlocked. Which I guess is... Uh... <laughs> Not, it's not an unreasonable thing to just say about rules and lockpicking and stuff. It's not that ridiculous. Um. Yeah, uh, doesn't really say too much about lockpicking. Pick a lock. Opening a lock without a key is very similar to disabling a device. Blah, blah, blah. I guess it's really just a concern if you, like, critically fail. Then you break your toolkit and leave behind obvious damage. But yeah, it doesn't say, you know, obviously it has to be consecutive. So, I don't know. It's just like, let's keep rolling and see if I ever critically fail. Which in this case would be rolling... Actually, I just did, didn't I? I rolled a 10. That's a critical fail on a DC 20. Okay, fuck that. Garziel's just gonna bust it down as usual. Athletics roll. Boom. 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 Crit. Boom. Done. The desk in this office has been repurposed into a messy butcher's block. A shiny silver hatchet is wedged in the top of the desk, and bits of decaying pale flesh lie strewn about the room. A low-grade silver hatchet. Hmm. So it's got uh, it's got a plus one potency rune, and um, does one d six, but it is made of silver. Low-grade silver, mind you, but silver nonetheless. In case we come across an enemy that needs to be killed with silver. Let's give it to Snonk, just in case. Now we're going to open this door. Oh, God. The heaps of slowly decaying bodies hung and stacked here reveal this former bedroom's current use as a meat locker. Five dead Morlocks are stored here, their flesh decomposing, aging to the ghoul palate, somewhat slowly in the chilly room. 
There's nothing of interest in here, but the filthy conditions expose any hero who searches the room to blue blisters, a disease arising from an uncommon flesh-eating bacteria. Ghouls find flesh infected with blue blisters to be quite savory. A hero who succeeds in a medicine or a nature check. Uh, let's see if we succeed. We do, so it old wibbles. Stay out of there, man. His bodies are infected. It would be kind of shitty. Uh, got infected and you kept failing. Just be sickened too for weeks. And drained too for weeks. Ugh. Speaking of which, Snonk is affected with a uh, ghoul fever. He's on stage two. So, as usual, we're going to head back to town. We're going to wait this out. Because uh, he actually should have healed for half of what he did. So, we'll head back and <laughs> spend more time. What, like, what an annoying concept, to be honest. Ghoul fever. So, one day will go by, and he's going to roll his fortitude check. He failed. Um, and again, we're not worrying about healing. We're just worrying about days passing, pretty much. Or if he dies and rises as a ghoul. So he's on stage three now. Two days have passed. Actually, he critically failed. Does he go straight to stage four? Yep, sure does. So he goes straight to stage four. And now he can't be healed. Which is pretty bad. And we'll assume he's at f full health, though. So 2d6 void damage, even a couple days in a row, is not going to be too bad. But two days have passed. Well, no. That was, that was the first day. So now we're going to do the second day. He's dead. No. 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 There's gotta be a fucking scroll of remove disease or some shit. Get out of here now. So there's a... Uh, treat disease as an action. Which gives him a bonus. Okay, so there's that. Uh, which that plus two would have prevented the first critical failure at the very least. Uh, but there's got to be some potion or, or something like that. Remove disease. That's a that's a spell. Where is that spell? It's not even in the game. It's not even in the game. Uh. -oh. Uh, what? Okay. This says a scroll of removed disease costs 30 gold. How is that not in the game? How is that not in Foundry? It's in the fucking core rulebook. 
Uh, although that's a legacy item, so maybe it's not in the remaster and they just removed it. Um, spells. Uh, how could you how could you remove the remove disease spell? Unless they change the name or something, I, you can't remove that. It's like a core thing. Um. Okay, there's definitely no remove s disease spell. There's raise dead. Raise dead's not that expensive, actually. Well, wait a minute. It says the cost is gemstones worth a total value of the target's level times 200 gold pieces. So I assume it's level times 200 gold pieces, which for him is 600. Okay, that's beyond. We don't want him to die. Uh... Okay, um, maybe there's a different name for it or something. No. Oh, Cleanse Affliction. There we go. Hold on. Cleanse Affliction. Gentle restorative magic pushes back the effects of toxins and more complex maladies. Choose an affliction on the target, such as curse, disease, or poison. If it is advanced past stage one, uh, yep, reduce the stage by one. This reduction can be applied only once to a given case of an affliction, with the case ending when it's completely cured. Okay. So the, the level 2 version just reduces the stage by 1. The heightened versions uh, actually attempt to counteract it, which would just nullify it. And that would be... Um... Uh, that would be a roll of some kind. Yeah, yeah. Um... For spells, the counteract check modifier is your spell casting abil ability modifier plus your spell casting proficiency bonus plus any bonuses and penalties that specifically apply to counteract check. Okay, so Botha, no, wait a minute. This is, uh, this is, okay, so Botha could cast the scroll if we bought it. I don't think we could buy, though, a heightened version. Because a level three. A third level spell has got to be like level five or something. Third rank. But that. Mm, 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 oh no. You're saying third rank is level three item? And you're saying 10th rank spells? Sh summon Kaiju? That's a level 10 item? No, I don't think that... No, I don't think that's necessarily what they're showing me. Okay, so hold on. Let's just for the sake of argument. Take Cleanse Affliction. Put it here. We want it to be heightened to rank 3. 
as a scroll. There it is. So this is item level five, 30 gold pieces. We can't buy, we have to order stuff above level four. So we can't actually get this quickly. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to buy the rank two version, which costs 12 gold pieces. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Because I was not aware of all the facts, all right? And that's important before you make these kind of decisions. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be saying this, of course, had he just, like, crit and succeeded and was healed. But I didn't understand. So we're going to spend 12 gold from Wibble's funds, because this, you know, Snonk is important to us now. Okay. And she's going to cast Cleanse Affliction. I don't think that'll do anything, but... Uh, see, it says counteract, but... We're not doing the counteract. This is just reducing the stage by one. Okay, so we did that right away when we got him back to town. So that reduced it to stage one. Then we're going to do the treat disease skill. Okay. God, her medicine is fucking atro- Wibble's probably better. No, Wibble is a two. Garziel's not going to be any better. Are you serious? No one has taken medicine. No, no one has taken medicine because Botha uses nature to treat wounds. But the thing is, it's very specific. She can't use medicine for any... She can't use nature for anything other than treat wounds. So, this is shitty. Because, uh... If she critically fails the treat disease... Surely there's a doctor or somebody in town. At the church or something? I mean, there's gotta be somebody... Yeah, it's the Stone Ring Pond Temple of Gozrith. Like, um... Surely... We could find someone to help. We will pay. Please. Please. Yeah, we're pretty much looking at uh, the Stone Ring Pond. I don't want to lose Snonk. Well, the fact that we pushed... I mean, even if we keep these rolls, which is terrible, uh, he would get another chance. He'd be at stage five. So he could work his way back down. Assuming he doesn't fail. So I guess let's just roll. But if he dies, uh, we'll rewind and we'll pay somebody in town to help us with the treat disease. So, he's going to roll this. 22 is still the number. Okay, so he succeeded on that. So now he's at stage 4. That was the third day. He'll roll again. Okay, successes. This is what we like. He's at stage 3. Uh, which is good, because he can be healed, so he won't die from that. Uh, go again. He's at stage 3. That is a failure, but not a critical failure. This is a lot of days, by the way. DC 22 is shit. 
Uh, okay. So he's at stage four again. And then he's dead. Fucking Christ, man! What the fuck? This is just so unusual for me. From just an RPG, like a like a D and D, like we never like ever used like any diseases or any disease rules or or anything like that. You know, it just didn't really exist. There was one time I can recall off the top of my head where I had a character get like some sort of really dangerous infection, and he was going to like die. Like, but there was a lot of build up to that. Like we were attacking this whole castle. It was like this infected castle. Um, and this was high level stuff. And, and um, the big bad of this castle was like some sort of. Um, some sort of like bug monster, like some swarm. It was like a giant worm constructed of cockroaches or, or something like that. Um, and so the whole thing was about infections. And so, and so my character got infected and it was very clear that we, we were going to die. And I think we got out of it because I did, like, an emergency blood transfusion. And I don't remember who who donated. I don't remember the specifics. I just remember there was a blood transfusion that we did. And the DM ruled that I, I survived it. Of course, realistically, that would never work. But at the time, it was, like, rule of cool. You rolled a fucking one. Twice. Three. Like. Okay. The first time he didn't roll a one. He rolled a three. But still. One to three is a crit. That's a 15% chance. He rolled it three times there. Snonk really. <laughs> like the world. This world wants Snonk dead. But I refuse to allow it. I fucking refuse. So we're just going to pay someone in town to, like, treat his disease every day to give him, like, a plus two on all these rolls. And I think, uh... He still would have critically failed here, but he'd be at, like, stage five. Had we, I guess, paid from this point, he would have... <sighs> okay, so let's say, let's, let's say we paid ten gold to somebody every day until he's healed for for them to treat his wounds to give him a plus two that's really overkill that's what i'm offering here that's the point we're at so he would have succeeded the first one right uh well no he would have failed but he wouldn't have critically failed so he was at stage two he would have been to stage three then he critically failed so he would have been at stage five then he succeeded so that's four then three then he would have succeeded this so two so now he's at four again. Okay? So he's at four. With a plus two to everything. He still succeed it failed. He's at five. Plus two to everything. Alright, I just I mean, yeah, I get it. Like, for one, he has, um... With a plus nine on the roll, he needs a 13 or better to succeed. Which means that he has, like, a... Um, what is that? Like a 34? 35% chance of success. Oh, but there is a max limit to the, to the duration. No, there isn't a max limit to the duration. You see, there's no max limit. So, yeah. Holy shit. This is insane. This is just, your character is fucking dead. Because he's a fighter. He's plus nine. What if it was Botha? What's her role? Plus six. That means she would need a 16 or better. Twenty-eight. 
25% chance per roll to succeed. And she would crit fail on a one through six. So she has a 25% chance of success and a 30% chance to critically fail and instantly bump it down two stages. I'm sorry, but this is stupid. Um, Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It just seems stupid to me. I hate it. I hate so much about it. And I'm trying to think of how I would run it, you know, if I was just DMing. I'd, I'd just be far more lenient. I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly how I would be lenient, but... I would be. And... Obviously, you know, this is pretty old school. There's just a lot of ways that people, you know, characters can die. And... That's just how it is, and that's just the game that people play. And I know I'm pretty Care Bear, because I came in with 4th edition D&D, &D, which was, most of the time, very difficult to die. Characters were very heroic and strong in 4th edition D&D, &D, and it was great. Um, and that's just kind of the game we played. And we had, you know, our biggest epic, most epic campaigns in that game, because we had the same characters for long periods of time. Um, and that's very much not old school, where characters can die at the drop of a hat. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just looking at what other people are saying about ghoul fever and things like that. Um, and there's even more discussion about, like, as a DM, do you tell the players that they have contracted ghoul fever? And then I feel like it's even worse. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, this is what I'm just going to rule. We're going to rule it, and, and I'm going to move on and be done with it. I'm just going to spend... I'm just going to spend 90 gold. Done. Just very nebulously. I don't know how that money was spent. Exactly who I paid off or what exactly it, I did with it. But Snonk does not have ghoul fever anymore. All right? I paid off the fucking gods. That's what I did. 
that's my uh, fee. That's the snog tax, all right? I don't want to hear any arguments. I already, you know, I, I mean, yeah, it certainly seems like the universe was conspiring to kill off snog. There was not much snog love here. But I can't give up on him that easy. So I'm willing to give basically all my money to ensure that he keeps snogging. Alright, so, um... Let's move on. Obviously, we rested during all that excitement. Uh, we will have to pass time during all that excitement. Um, I don't know. Well, let's just count up how many times I roll, and we'll just use that as well. That's part of the snog tax. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days we spent taking care of little snog. <laughs> so a week and a day. It's now nearly the end of Serenith. We're probably going to have to do another, like, attack or something soon. Oh boy, ridiculous, man. Fucking ridiculous. Cool fever. Yeah, I mean, I... <sighs> I feel like if Botha gets hit with that, it's just, you're dead. Sorry, thanks for playing. You're dead. Three plain beds have been awkwardly stacked against the west wall of this room, leaving room for a single low table heaped with foul-smelling chunks of flesh and bone. This room now serves as a dining room for three ghouls who are feasting on the remains of a Morlock. They attack the arrows on sight, but the first one injured tries to flee to Area C-19 to recruit Alarosk's aid. Yeah, Alarosk died eight days ago, actually. But okay. You know, one thing about uh, Abomination Vaults... It's very... Um, God. It's very cramped. Uh, like, every room, nearly every room you're in um, is a cramped fight. Which is why I had to get rid of that rhinoceros. It was ridiculous. All right, first ghoul up is going to move in and is going to be using some jaws and is going to be hitting. Thankfully, we have some shield blocking. This is a low threat encounter. He'll follow it up with a claw. Miss. Garziel will go first. Um... I'm, are we counting? We're not counting the table as difficult terrain, are we? That would be ridiculous. I think the scale is just off. And I wonder if the scale of this whole map is off. Think about it. If you, if you have the size of the squares. Like, look at the tiles here on the ground. Wibble is taking up four of those squares. Imagine if he took up one of those squares. That scale would make far more sense. Wow. I wonder if anyone else has pointed that out. One five-foot square contains four two-and-a-half-foot stone tiles in the art. So now that is the that is the scale.
Um. Okay, so other people have done what I just said. Other people said kind of they do it on a floor by floor basis because some floors are really cramped. But this is too cramped. I mean, this is ridiculously cramped. You're telling me two rhinos couldn't fit in this room? I think two rhinos could fit in this room. So I don't even know how you'd go about doing that. I guess here. Uh, grid size pixels 150. Or do you change the grid scale? I don't think you change the grid scale. Grid size, maybe you just cut this to 75? Whoa. That's... That's it? Uh, although, it is kind of funny, because now everything looks like miniature. Like, they look like little munchkins. Yeah, I suppose, I think the scale is just weird, to be honest. I guess it doesn't make sense for him to occupy one tile. And, and like, look at the scale of this chair. I don't, maybe it's just because I have this portrait. No, I, I don't know. I mean, it probably would make combat a little better. The reason why this started is because of uh, of this section here next to this table. Like now, he you know this he can just walk between the table and this wall. But the way it was before, he was occupying part of the table while walking next to it, and it just fucked with me. But yeah, based on the actual, like, furniture and everything around here, uh, most of it, it just doesn't make sense to be this small. So, we'll change it back. It was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. That probably fucked with stuff, didn't it? <sighs> okay. Now everything seems huge. I guess that's what it was. Um. Uh, so anyways, Garziel... Um, I think I was thinking of going here and then here, but the problem is, if we count that as difficult terrain, which part of that is, I mean, this is, this movement is at least, this would be five, I guess this would be 15, so that would be 20 total, I guess we'll allow that. His second action is going to be to swing. And his third action is going to be to raise his shield. Okay, Wibble Fizzle Crank. Are we counting this as a shot? Of course I am. Nineteen. That very well might be a crit. Oh yeah, baby. Critical hit. Oh ho 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 ho! Kapow! Blew his fucking brains out! You'll love to see it. All right, Snonk. 5, 10, 15, 20. We could bring Basilicus in here, but it's a little cramped. Uh, so he's just going to Vicious Strike for his rest of his turn. And hit. 
Oh my god. One, two, and three. That should have been a kill. By all rights, that should have been a kill. Damn it, Snonk. I spent so much to save you. All right, well, this thing's just obviously just going to let loose. Probably give him ghoul fever again. No, nope, miss. Miss. Okay, the next ghoul is going to move. Um. Actually, it did say one of them was going to try to warn him. That should have been the other guy. We'll make it this guy. Uh, reaction. Yes, we will use that. It. Damn it, Snog. Well, now he's injured. So that's five. Uh, that's gonna be difficult terrain. So that's another ten. So fifteen. Another ten. Twenty-five. He's got speed thirty. So he'll move here. Then he sees that. <laughs> Um, the guy is definitely not in, but I guess he'll target Wibble with his, uh, second action. And, uh, Wibble with his third action. Okay, not going well for that guy. Botha is going to just use a little electric arc action. damage. Um, I could punch him. I'm gonna punch him. Okay, I tried. Rolled a one. <laughs> Clearly doesn't do that too often. Alright, Garziel, let's just, just finish this. Move here. Target him. Swing. Dead. Dead. Crit. Beautiful. Dead. Very dead. So dead. Dead. Uh, then he has a third action, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, Wibble, five. Ten. Uh, Twenty. Um, he'll... Yeah, I mean, we may as well devise a stratagem, even though... Okay. And then I'll just shoot. That is going to kill him. Okay. Ghouls, easy fight. No problem. Up to 680 now. Alright, we've cleared out the ghoul section here. Let's keep moving on. Let's open this door, and I don't know what's in there. It's always fun. It's a door. It's a room. Belcora's office. This office is brightly lit by several glow glowing lights and a chandelier hanging above a desk and chair. Mirrors hang on the north and south wall, though both of them are badly cracked. The light in this chamber isn't particularly harmful to ghouls, but the cult of the canker doesn't find the light pleasant. Further, they view this area and the rooms beyond as the private domain of their patron, Belcora, and out of respect for her on the day of her return, they've left this room and those beyond it untouched. If they discover the heroes have entered the area, though, the surviving ghouls pursue them in here with a righteous fury. As long as any heroes are in here, Cult of the Canker Ghouls gain plus one circumstance bonus to attack rolls against them. The western door is locked, and the lock plate is engraved with a stylized open book. This decoration matches the image on one of the keys in area A13. And there's an ever-burning torch here. Guess we'll give that to Snog. Uh, A13, the rusted ring of keys. I have that. Yep, I sure do. All right, let's uh, let's crack that bad boy open.
Boom. All right. This room looks exceptionally comfortable with a thick carpet, bright light from a glowing chandelier, and soothing incense. Two overstuffed chairs sit opposite a low table stacked with books, while more books sit on a set of shelves to the west. A softly gurgling fountain carved to resemble a mossy skull leaking water sits in the northwest corner. This room once served as a private and comfortable place for Belcor to relax and read. Most of the books here concern topics of sacrifice, incorporeal undead, and extinguishing living bodies and souls to create powerful magic items. Other books are tales, often fictionalized, of famous hauntings throughout the inner sea. Uh, okay, most importantly, we got the Lurker in Light here. The room's comforts are wasted on the current occupant, a Lurker in Light named Shimmergrin, who recently slipped into the brightly lit room to satisfy their own curiosity. The creature sits awkwardly in one of the oversized chairs in the room as they focus on balancing a book a little bit too large for them to handle. They periodically cackle and titter over the book as they annotate its text with a colorful quill. They become distracted by the grisly descriptions of ritual sacrifice in an illustrated copy of a text called Pathways of the Worm, and angrily attack if interrupted. If brought below 20 hit points, the Fae uses Dimension Door to flee to Area C-26. Although they can't do so if the heroes have doused that room's illumination. And flit away. They plot revenge against the heroes, most likely by allying with the ghouls in area C-33. Alright, sounds like a combat to me. Let's get some combat music. Roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Okay, Lurker and Light going pretty late. Everyone's rolling fairly high numbers. 29 initiative. Oof. Alright, is this worthy of summoning an animal? Is this a fight worthy of bringing out Scave Corpion himself? Also, we should probably swap out Runic Weapon now, because that's basically useless. Yes, let us bring out the Scave Corpion right now. And that gives uh, two actions. Let's try and pincer him, hit something, and then let's use a Stinger. Crit on the stinger. Dude, Scape Corpion has crit an insane amount. 14. And then they has to make a DC 17 fortitude check. He fails. <laughs> okay, so uh, he immediately takes 1d4 poison damage. Scave Corpion came out swinging with 16 damage there. Pretty good. All right, Snonk. Now, can I get onto the fountain? Probably. I think we just consider that difficult terrain. So that would be 5, 10, and then difficult terrain, 10 plus 5 is 15, so 25. And wouldn't you know it, that's his land speed. We're counting it. For his second action, he's going to Vicious Swing. Fucking critical miss. Damn it! Alright. Wibble Fizzle Crank. That doesn't really seem like line of sight to me. So, maybe we'll go here. And roll that Stratagem. What? Okay. Well, we certainly don't need to utilize that. Alright. Lurker and Light. What do we got? Claw's Moat of Light is a ranged plus Lurker's Glow. As a reaction, whenever it moves... 
it becomes invisible until it er enters an area of dim light or darkness or until it uses a hostile action. Okay. Oh, it also has spells. Fourth rank spells. And summon a fae. I guess it would probably do that, wouldn't it? So I have to find a fucking fey creature. Uh, uh, oh, it's a manipulate action. <laughs> you dumb bitch. Crit. Aw. Well, uh, oof. Uh, he's probably regretting summoning a fey, but he did it. So, let's go to the compendium. Let's look at the bestiary. And this is a fourth rank spell, so it's a level three fey creature. Which is pretty bad, all things considered. Level three. We just kind of get to pick one. A unicorn? It's pretty fun. Uh, we definitely want something common, though. And something with an image. So maybe a dryad. But that's a lot of spell casting. We don't want to get into that. Draxy. Probably most fake creatures are going to have spell casting. Tooth Fairy Swarm. It's pretty bad. Twig Jack. The little tiny creature. Sure, let's go with Twig Jack. There it is. And it immediately gets two actions. So it is, of course, going for Snonk. She hates... It hates Snonk. Um... Can't do the three action thing. Um, yeah, it definitely would have been better positioned over here <laughs> to do Splinter Spray, but now it can't. I made my decision, so it's just going to claw. Hit for 1d10 plus 4. Uh, hit a lot. Garziel can use Liberating Step. Garziel will use Liberating Step. Lower that to 9 damage, and then it'll do another claw. Critting. Yikes. Twelve damage. It did less damage on the crit. Yeah. That is possible. But it hurts. It certainly hurts. Okay. Garziel. Move in. Um, we could trip him, but he probably has a fly speed. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's demoralize him instead. No. No. Good. Success. And then swing. Miss. All right, Batha is going to command Scave Corpion to do his thing. Hitting. For three damage. And then, of course, he's going to attempt to grab, and someday he'll get it. They are going to rue the day. It's success! Yes, thanks to the Frightened! Yeah! Okay, he's grabbed. Oh, it automatically did that. Okay, so he's off guard to everybody. And immobilized. Okay, awesome. Snog's gonna go. 
Snog's going for that vicious swing, of course. Failure. Roll the three. Alright, and then he'll, uh... He'll just swing with plus two. And critically miss. Damn it! Alright, Wibble. Devise that stratagem. Save us. Save us. Nine. That's gonna be a hit, right? Yep. Come on, just roll big. Wow! That is shockingly bad. <laughs> Fuck me. Okay, the lurker in light. So it's, uh... It's immobilized, but I think you can teleport. But there's a couple things to note. Well, okay, so teleportation is not usually trigger reactions based on movement, so there's not going to be an op. But... He, uh... He does have to pass a DC-5 flat check. And he does. So he's going to cast Dimension Door. No, you cannot do that. And he can just teleport uh, when in bright light to an area in bright light. And um, technically, this is still in bright light because we have Garziel here. So I don't know exactly where we'd allow him to go to. Probably there at, at, at least, you know. Maybe further. And then he's going to fly away. Specifically, it's said to go to C-33. Which is over here. 5, 15, 20, 25. Okay, that's his turn. We might still be able to stop him. Wibble might still be able to snipe him in the dome. It's Garziel's turn. I think we probably should deal with this twig jack, though. They'll move there. Strike. And miss. And the twig jack doesn't do shit unless the lurker in light, like, commands him, I guess. Okay, Botha. Okay, good enough. We're going to use Electric Arc. Half damage. Something. Can Snonk catch up? Snonk doesn't have Sudden Charge. So it'd be a little tricky. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 10, 15, 20, 25. He wouldn't quite make it there. He could uh, command Basilicus, though. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Still wouldn't do it. So it's kind of up to Wibble here. I guess Snonk will just go for Twig Jack. It 38 damage. Poor little twig jack. Critical miss. Alright, Wibble. End it. End him. Legolas! Fuck! It's not happening. Alright, we gotta do accidental shot then. Roll 1d20. Roll... Well, that's not good. Roll 1d20. That could do it. So 14 plus 7. Uh, but he has no negatives anymore. So no, that does not do it. Yeah, because... That's all it is. 
Seven. Unless I critically succeeded on my free recall knowledge. That would be the only way. I'd have to roll nature. No, that's a success, not a crit. So, no, sadly, no such luck with the Lurker and Light. Damn it! So close. It was like three rolls where I had a chance. Okay, so the Lurker and Light, I guess, moves, interacts, and then moves again. And starts squawking to the rest of these that, uh... They're being attacked. And I don't know if, uh... Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll just do the, do the fight. So now Garziel goes, unaware, blissfully, of what's happening over there. Critically fails, because... Why wouldn't we? There you go. <laughs> Fucking double ones. Oh my god. Alright. Can't possibly do that badly again. Alright, we got the twig jack. He's gone. Okay, so now we're going to add the rest of these to the encounter, making it an extreme encounter. Good God. They all rolled really poorly. Um, they wouldn't come in until the next round. Next round. Okay, so we got Botha here. She's going to command Scave Corpion. 15, 25, 5, 10, 15. I guess we'll go here. Uh, I probably should heal somebody. She'll heal Snog. Fuck. Okay, and Snog. 5, 10... Where did I say? I could get to, like, here. I think that's what I said. So we'll go there. Wibble. Wibble can definitely snipe this thing still. Come on, Wibble. Fuck me! Fine, then just move here. Make sure your gun's loaded, I guess. Can't believe that shit. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, it's not going to rush in. Now it's gonna be. It's probably gonna summon another Fey. Or, uh. It could use Searing Light from where it is. I guess it will do that on fucking Snog. Damn. There's not even a save. This is just an attack. Plus 14. Uh oh. 22 damage to Snog. That's not good. Uh, then he has a third action. Not much he can do. He's not going to rush in. He's not that stupid. He's, uh,. Could use mode of light, but that's range increment 10 feet. Which I think is like minus 2 for every 10 feet over. So that'd be. That would be minus 2. That would be minus 4. So minus 6 he would take. And he already used that, so he'd be rolling with a plus 4 on his roll. 
He doesn't have much else to do, though, so he may as well. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. Obviously a miss. Okay. Dangerous. Very dangerous stuff. Ghouls. Uh, you know, we just kind of have to calculate this, unfortunately. 30 speed. 5, 10, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20. And then a strike. There you go, 1d6 plus 1. Why did Snonk go up like that? So now Snonk has to roll against School Fever! Okay, he's alright. Garziel, get in there. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yep. 10, 15, 20. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. It's gonna go there. 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30. 5, 10, 15. Uh, I guess it'll go here. And he's got one jaw. Miss. Cultist has harm. Which is probably what he should do. We got a range of 30 feet. So you would just have to stand there and you could harm Snog and probably kill him. Or you could go there and cast it on Garziel. We'll be nice to the Snog player. Always be nice to the Snog player. And he'll cast harm versus living. Full nine damage. Okay. This is an extreme battle. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty-five, thirty. Five, ten. Fifteen. Yes, we do want to use reactive strike. Yes, I do want to hit. <laughs> okay, but it does get an attack. And he's flanked, so... Yep, that's a crit. Uh, we do want to use Liberating Step. Which may save him. Yep, okay, good. That did prevent him from going down. Not looking good, though. So we still have one more ghoul coming in. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 10, 15, 20. Don't go for Garziel, because I'll be nice to the Snog player. Hit Garziel. Oh, I also have to roll. Okay, so I have to roll Ghoul Fever for both of them. Snog's okay, and Garziel's okay. Christ. This really got out of hand. Now, if we do the 30-foot emanation... If we do the 30-foot emanation... I know I've fallen for this before. We would hit two of the ghouls. We would do some amount of damage to both of them. But Garziel doesn't really need healing, and Snonk needs a lot of healing. So, yes, we're just going to target Snonk. Come on, big money, big money, big money. All right, take it. Then her third action, she's going to activate Scave Corpion. 
to move there. Target that with that. Crit. Dude, Scave Corpion, crit again! It's too good. Boom, getting kills out here. We have an important decision to make for Snog. This is what I'm going to do. 5, 10, 15. The second action, I'm going to close the door. And then his third action, I'm going to swing. Hit. Uh, the Retribution Axe damage is only if he... That's if you're targeting someone that damaged you. Uh, I believe. That's the whole point. Yeah. Um, and that guy didn't damage me, so... Okay, it's not bad. Alright, Wibble. We're gonna try and pick that one off. Snipe him. Snipe him, Wibble. Seven. I doubt it, but I'll fire. Oh, that's a hit. Excellent. They're weak. Oh, and it's a damn good roll. Boom. Excellent. Okay. So now the Lurker in Light has to decide if it wants to move up to that doorway next to Snog. Or pass its turn. Oh boy. I guess it'll go up. No. No. That's really dumb. I don't think it would... I think it would just flee, to be honest. It's certainly not going to get close to the melee people. It probably would delay its turn, but I don't know if the GM is ever really going to do that. Maybe on, like, the smartest of creatures. And, um, and this thing seems fairly smart, but... No. And I don't think it has any effects. It does have Mage Hand. I don't know, actually, if that can open doors. No, it cannot open doors. Okay. I could summon another Fey, though. Which is probably what it would do with its turn. So we'll cast that. So now this is a level 2 Fey creature. So we have to go back to the Compendium Browser. Drop this down to 2. We don't have many choices. We've got a Leprechaun. With Leprechaun magic. We've got a Domovoy. Which I think is Butler's real name in the Artemis Fowl series. And we've got a Nuglub. Okay, we'll go with a Nuglub. A little gremlin. So the Nuglub gets two actions. Of course, it's going to open the door. And then it's probably going to go for uh, Snog. Probably with a claw or a bite. Probably a bite. Yeah. Okay. It'll go for the bite. Aha! Miss. Thank God. Okay, we got more ghouls. He's gonna move here. Flank Garziel. Go for the jaws. Hit. Remember when we used to raise our shield? Those were the days. Okay, Garziel has to roll against the fort. Ghoul fever. He failed. He has ghoul fever again. 
Great, more days passed doing nothing. Uh, and then he'll do another... He'll do a claw. And hits. So four damage and another fortitude against paralyzation, which would be a lot worse. And... Ah, yes. An important rule, and the one I would have forgotten about entirely. 100 fucking percent, had it not been for this being like a video game. But his paralysis, because that's a pretty serious effect, has the incapacitation trait. Which means that any creature of more than twice the spell's rank treats the result of their check to prevent being incapa incapacitated by the spell's one degree of success better. So that means that in order for Garziel, who is level 3 compared to level 1, you know, more than twice the rank, uh, in order for him to be incapacitated by this, in to be paralyzed, he would have to critically fail the roll, which in this case means rolling a 1. That, so that's the only way the paralysis could occur, because it bumps it up otherwise from a failure to a su success. Very important to note there. So that's why, you know, you can't just have like a level one creature throwing out sleep spells and, you know, you know, stuff like that, stuns and stuff um, that you're, you know, probably going to fail with enough rolls. <sighs> um, and... So, because, you know, say DC 15, but say I had a plus 18 on my fortitude roll, you'd normally you'd never, you'd never be able to fail. Uh, but if you rolled a one, uh, it would be bumped up. So instead of succeeding, it would be a failure. Um, but with this, it bumps it up the other way. So... <laughs> Because uh, it's an incapacitation thing. So, what, eventually, if you have a plus 15 fortitude, or a plus 14 fortitude, um, you literally cannot be paralyzed by it. You will, you will, you cannot be, even if you're all one. Uh, so that's the new incapacitation trait that kind of fixes that. And it's also the reason that the sleep spell is pretty shit now compared to the way it used to be. Because it very quickly becomes... Uh, useless. Because you're often fighting creatures higher level than you. And sleep spell is a level one spell, you know. Anyways, that's all that. Garziel gets to go. Uh, we're going to leave these two jabronis for the others. We want to get in there to prevent... Uh, um more spells and shit from hitting Snonk. But I need to know... I need to know what happens to a summoned creature if the caster dies. Um... So, summons do not disappear once the caster dies. But, um, I don't think, 
I don't think the creature does anything if it doesn't have actions for it. Oh, yeah, because it's sustained. So actually... Oh, shit. So if Botha ever doesn't suspend an action to sustain him, he goes away. So that's true for Lurker and Light as well. So that little Thorn dude probably should have just gone away. Um, okay, so that's good to know. So Garzil, I guess, will try and move around this Nuglub. Uh, 5, 10, 20. And I'm pretty sure it gets a kneecapper move. Yep. So he, he wouldn't have moved yet. This kneecapper would happen first. He makes an acrobatics check against the creature's reflex DC. Ah, but that lets Snonk do his reactive strike. I'm pretty sure he failed, though. Yeah, he did fail, so I don't know if I care, because this creature's about to go away. Um, but I don't know when Snonk is otherwise going to use it. But maybe there's a chance. So, no, we'll just move on. That was uh, 20 movement. Then we'll go 5, 10. And then he's going to target the Lurker in light. Come on now. Fucking critical miss! God damn it! Jeez. <sighs> oh, well, he's definitely going for Snog. Why wouldn't he? Critical miss. Okay. You take the good with the bad. Uh, and then he'll claw and miss. Good. Now we've got a canker cultist here. So he's targeting Garzeel. Probably with phantom pain, I would think. It's a pretty good spell. He rolled quite well. Um... Oh, not well enough, though. That's half damage. So that's, uh... Nope, that's incorrect. I take full initial damage, but no persistent damage. So, sorry about that. Full initial. 13. Ouch. And then he's got one action left. He could move. Or he could move. I guess he'll move. Unless it has specific text for what he might do. Um... Not really. Okay. Botha. Command Scave Corpion. Who has a 30 foot move speed. Quite a bit. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Targeting this ghoul. Would you believe Scave Corpion crit again? Oh! Now we could grab him, but I think I'd rather just pincer again. <laughs> Another crit. <laughs> oh my god. Scave just soloed that ghoul. All right, Snonk. We gotta get to that lurker. It's the only way this is gonna work. Unless we have Wibble snipe it. Do we want to base things on that? Either way, I'm gonna have to move away from this Nuglub, who's gonna... And actually, I don't know. This is the other thing about, like... Summon creatures don't have reactions because they have the minion trait. Oh, great. Never mind what I said. Uh, awesome. Do I want to go for the Lurker and Light then? Do I trust Wibble to make that shot? Hmm. 
No. Five, ten, uh, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. I'm not gonna vicious strike, so we may need to do two hits. We're just doing this. Yep, miss, because I rolled a seven. Twenty-two AC is stupid. And a critical miss. Fuck. Alright. We're trusting in Wibble anyways. He needs to roll a 12 or better. That's it. That's it. Just roll a 12 or better, Wibble. My grandma could do it. There you go. That's all we needed. Now don't fucking roll once. Christ on a bug, Wibble! What are the odds of that? What are the odds of that? The odds can't be great for that occurring. Great. So the Lurker in Light gets a turn. He doesn't have that many spells left. He's going to command Nuglub because, you know, why wouldn't he? Uh, so Nuglub will go here. I don't think you can flank through a bookshelf, so I'm not allowing that nonsense. But Nuglub will go there and uh, do a bite and miss. Thank God for that. And then... The Lurker Easter either has to stand here and cast Blindness, which will provoke an op, or move, which will provoke an op. I think he's going to keep trying to flee. So he'll go here, provoking the op. Miss. Okay. Five, ten. He'll go here. And he's going to open this door. No, that's so cruel to myself. I, I don't think I can even do it. I don't think I have the heart to do it to myself. Because why would he... <laughs> Why would he know where all the ghouls are instinctively? So no, fuck that. He's just gonna go up here. It's bad enough. All right, the ghoul's gonna move in, target the scave corpion, and uh, give him the old claw. Missed. Give him another claw. Hit. Still. Scave corpion is... An impressive specimen. Alright, Garziel. 5, 15, 20. <clears throat> He's going to, um... He should probably heal. So there's no way I'm one-shotting this thing with 45 health. But I should probably lay on hands. I'm gonna try to trip. Instead. I critically failed, so I'm prone. Awesome. And then I'll use Lay on Hands on myself. Which now heals for 12, which is pretty nice. And I do not get that effect. Okay, the cultists. What have you got left? Grim tendrils. Yeah, that'll hit both. I'll do that. Well, it's certainly not much damage. It's not an amazing ability. Okay, four damage. Four damage. Nuglub takes two. Um, and then they both take one bleed. Then, uh, I guess he'll keep backing up, because forcing them to move kind of works for him. 
Okay, Botha. <clears throat> Boy. Scave Corpion will attempt a pincer. Hit. Seven damage. Uh, and then we'll attempt a stinger. Crit. Fuck you. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, man. Okay. Are you immune to poison? You are. Okay. That didn't matter. Pretty close, though. We almost got him. Then Botha could just finish off that ghoul. Because uh, I don't think we can cast Wand of Heal from all the way over here. That's a range of 30 feet. There isn't much else for me to do. I guess we will cast Electric Arc. Now, um... Okay, no, we have... So it's round 7. This lasts a minute. Each round is 6 seconds. So at round 10, Scave Corpion will go away. We still have time. We still have time. Half damage. Still enough to kill you, asshole. Alright, Snonk. We really need to kill this lurker. So 5, 10, 15, 25. We're gonna do a swing. I can't believe it, man. I really... This is insane. Okay, another swing, another miss. That's fucking ridiculous. I mean, this is why many people have just moved away. I shouldn't say many, but plenty of people have moved away from a D20 games. Because D20 is one of the most, like, unpredictable... <laughs> devices that we have in the gaming community and yet it's it's been such a fucking mainstay for decades and some people have gone so far as to not even have rolls for attacks you just automatically hit because no one wants to deal with this fucking nonsense the enemies are likely to hit you anyways so just move on just everything hits each other have fun with it Ridiculous. 5, 10, 15, uh, 25. Okay, so if I... If I hit with this, if I shoot this, uh, I will not have a bullet loaded. But, of course, I won't hit. So, um, yeah. That's that. We don't have to worry about that. I can't believe... Wibble has rolled, devised a stratagem now, like, what, it's fourth time in a row without rolling above a 12? Without rolling above an 11. Yeah, insane. Okay. Uh, the Lurker in Lights gets to go. It's certainly running out of spells. can fly, though, so I guess it'll... It, it, he gets an op. He gets another chance here to make it right. <laughs> oh, my God! Holy shit! It's insane! The Lurker and Light's probably thinking just like, these are the guys that attacked me? What, what happened to them? Alright, he's gonna cast Blindness, but he doesn't even need to. I don't know why I'm doing this. He should just cast an attack and kill him. All right, so he failed his blindness save, because that's a DC 22. So he's blinded now for one minute. So he can't detect anything using vision. Everything is undetected to him. Um, 
I had the option of giving him uh, the sense, uh, a scent smell, sense, so that he could um, detect things imprecisely within 30 feet, but I went with dark vision instead, which is pointless. When do we ever care about that? Uh, okay, well, now he's blinded. So that's, that's that. Pretty powerful ability. Garziel is going to stand. The he's got to get up. He's gonna move by here, and he's gonna swing. He's got to put it down. I can't. The the odds of this. What the fuck are the odds of this? This many attack rolls, never rolling above like a, a an eleven. This is just oh, it's so fucking frustrating, man. And I'm not normally the type of person that gets frustrated over bad rolls. Um, because normally I don't play by myself. I play with a group of people, and maybe I'm having a rough night. My rolls aren't connecting, but usually it averages out for the group. But if everybody's having bad rolls, then it's kind of just a humorous thing. It's like, what the fuck is going on? You know, it becomes almost comical. But when you're playing solo and it's like a video game and RNG is just against you, then it's like, you know, it's like XCOM where you just keep missing like the 90% shots over and over and it's like, holy shit, the world is, is against me. Uh, okay. Um, well, if we don't want to just attack stuff, even though that would be the smartest thing to do. No, I mean, I guess he would probably attack stuff. Like, kill this blinded rat next to him. Mm, I'm pretty sure you can't use ops. Okay, no, but I have, I have ears. Ears are an imprecise sense, sense that most creatures have. And assuming that, you know, the, the target is making noise, which I would think so, um, then it's not undetected to me, it's hidden to me. Because you can... You know, that you've seen that in plenty of... I mean, fucking Daredevil, you know. He hears things, and that's how he fights. So we at least know that this thing is next to us, so we can make an op, but... It, we do have to pass the DC-11 flat check. And that's a failure. So, uh, we we used the op fine, but it didn't uh, didn't do anything. So he's going to move here, and then he's going to use Telekinetic Projectile. He probably should have just kept wailing on me, but... Two D6 plus three. Uh, that is in range of Liberating Step, though, thankfully. Five damage, so I'm still in it. Okay. Oh, Nuglub is definitely gone. He did not sustain that ever. He should have, but he didn't. Um. So, Botha can go. We're probably going to command Scave Corpion to make a move, but... I don't know if he'll get up there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. Don't think there's any faster way to do that. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Unfortunately not. 
The best he can do is... No, there's nothing. There's nothing he can really do. Unfortunately. Damn, damn. So, he'll move. Yeah, yeah I wasn't going to give the flank. So, there you go. Uh, then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Nowhere near enough to heal. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Snog. Uh, so Snog can... I don't know. It's, it's giving me this, but... How the fuck would I sense Wibble over there? So, you can usually sense a creature automatically with an imprecise sense, but it has the hidden condition instead of the observed condition. It might be undetected by you if it's using stealth or is in an environment that distorts the sense, such as a noisy room in the case of hearing. In those cases, you have to use the seek basic action to detect the creature. Right, so, he can still move. No, fuck it, we need to kill the lurker. He's gonna go there. Um, he's gonna roll his first attack, so we'll do the flat check. DC 11. Fail. Okay. That still counts then towards his multiple attack penalty. So now his third action. Okay, so he does... If he hits, he connects, but he probably will not hit. Uh, of course, he failed because he rolled a 2. No surprises there. But he still might get an op chance. Uh, and he'll never, ever recover from that because he is incapable of rolling above an 11. So just forget about that. He will certainly bleed to death. Um, whoops. Okay, Wibble. He's going to move here. He's going to target the Lurker. Uh, second action, devise a stratagem. That's the money. Finally did it. Now, if he rolls three ones, I swear to every god on this earth. Okay, thank you. Dead. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my lord. Okay, Garziel. Got too many. This has been the long. This was the longest fight by far. Uh, five, ten, fifteen. We're gonna try to trip. Knocked him prone. And then our third action will be to. Probably should be to raise our shield, but I'm really angry. I want to hit him. We'll never hit him. Roll the five. Okay. No, he will also bleed to death. Okay, he is going to, uh, he's going to stand. I don't think he's even going to bother with spells at this point. He'll probably just lash out. Um, with jaws. That, of course, hits, because why wouldn't it? I really, really should have raised my shield, by the way. Um, and then he's going to have to roll for Ghoul Fever. Success. And Paralysis. Success. Uh, and then we will roll a Claw as his third action. Miss. Okay, we're getting there. Batha is going to... Oh, if I don't heal Garziel... No, Garziel can heal himself with Lay on Hands. So he's going to command... She's going to command Scave Corpion himself to move in. And give him a good old pincer attack. Hit. Surprise it's not a crit. It's pretty close. You're only 17. 
We finally damaged the cultist. Um, this guy has two actions. She'll heal Snog with her wand. Good. Snog. He's going to move up. And is going to Vicious Swing. I don't... I think he was... I don't know if he would... Fuck, he was the last creature to damage me. I don't care. Of course, Snog misses because he rolls a six. I mean, at this point, you really should not expect anything less than that. Oh, but he did finally remove bleed. Oh, I didn't even roll my flat check, so... <laughs> even if I had hit him, he probably would have missed. Alright, Garziel is gonna have to uh, lay on hands himself. For 12 health. And again, he does not get that effect. That's only allies. Then he's going to... Um, could trip him prone. But I really want the hit, so we'll just go for the hit. There you go. A hit! Yes! Yes! 12 damage! Yes! And then he's going to raise his shield. We're nearly done with this fight. Nearly done. The cultist... Probably wants to get the fuck out of here, to be honest. He doesn't have any spells, though. Well, he has some spells, but nothing that would really be worth his time. So, uh, he's gonna swift leap. Right here, which does not provoke ops. Bullshit. Uh, and then he's going to use Jaws, which is a hit. We will use Liberating Step, of course. Seven damage to Snonk. Uh, um, he actually should be off guard to everything, I think. But anyways, we got to roll for Ghoul Fever. I can't believe he fucking got Ghoul Fever again. I fucking hate ghouls, man. Holy shit. I think, I think Garziel might have Ghoul Fever as well. Oh, and he's paralyzed. Excellent. Most fucking excellent. Blinded, paralyzed, ghoul fever. Fucking snonk! Oh, that wasn't even the end of it, was it? He still had another... <laughs> still had another claw attack he could do. Of course he hit. How could he not? He's blind and paralyzed. If you missed, it'd be disgraceful. <laughs> so insane. All right. Scave Corpion going in. I don't think this is actually a flank, by the way. So he should go here to help Garziel get a flank. And then uh, give him the old pincer. Miss. Botha will... Um... <coughs> oh, this is actually Scave Corpion's last round, so he'll disappear anyway. I've got no more heals. So I guess we'll just electric arc. For a miserable amount of damage. Takes three. Uh, so goodbye, Scave Corpion. Snonk can't do anything except roll his shit. So he's now rolling a DC 19... Fortitude. 
That is a success. Because it goes down by one each time. But that was the end of his turn, so there's nothing else to say. Wibble is going to go. Devise a stratagem. Crit! So I think I actually have to reload. I think the way it said it, I had to reload and then my third action I can shoot. But I'm perfectly okay with that. Come on, big, big money, big money, big money, big money, big money. 20 damage. Kapow! Not quite dead, but very, very close. Garziel, it's all up to you. Snonk's life hangs in the balance. Yes. Yes. Yes, Garziel. Yes, Snonk. Yeah! Holy shit. That fight was insane, man. I, yeah, I can't believe we got out of that with everyone alive. Again, um, it would have been extremely easy if a GM was playing, playing for blood. Uh, it would have been extremely easy to kill probably the whole party, really. Um, as I said, I play it fairly Care Bear, but I don't fudge rolls here because I, I kind of can't. So it is what it is. But 200 XP for that insane ordeal. So we're at 880 out of 1,000 to level 4. Um, so yeah, we'll probably be level 4 around the time of the end of the third level, the third floor. So then we'll be level 4 for the fourth floor, and it keeps on, keeps on. Probably hit level four before the end of this, though. Um, so now we have to go back. We've got two characters with ghoul fever. And I... I hate it. I hate it. But I guess we may as well... do the rolls. So... more time is gonna pass. Technically, you can spend one day with no effects of any kind, so we don't have to go back right away, but we are also extremely beaten up. Uh, okay, so this was a DC 20 from this guy. Thankfully, not quite as high. Let's do Garziel first. he They're both at stage one. I'm, I, I know that for a fact. So if they both succeed, we don't have to spend... Uh, we only have to spend one day. So let's, let's, let's do it. I probably should have treat diseased. Um, okay. Garziel's done. But none of us have medicine. I'd have to pay someone in town. And I don't have any money. I have a little money. I don't know the cost of it. I don't know. Just do it. Just do it. Snonk, just do it. Snonk, just do it. There you go. All right, one day. One day's gone by. The 30th of Serenith. Okay. Well, that was uh, that was quite a long video, I think. So, <laughs> that's going to do it for us for today. Yeah. What an epic battle. But that's sort of the scary thing about fighting in a cramped dungeon like this with loads of rooms. It's very easy for a creature to just run and open up another door. And and had I done that, yeah, we would have lost. Absolutely. Two more of those cultists? That's fucking death. Like, there, there, was, there wouldn't even be a term for how difficult a, a, an encounter of that would be. Um. So, uh, yeah. And, and absolutely, as a GM... I wouldn't have done that. And even if I was GMing and that thing managed to get to that door and open it, I may have removed one of the ghouls or something like that. Uh, just... <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's it certainly was doable, even with extremely shitty rolls. 
So I guess that is what it is. It was a hard-fought victory, but well-earned. Alright. So we will finish up level 3 next time. But for now, my name is Mang. Game you're watching has been Abomination Vaults, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I'll see you fine folks in the next part.